DNA testing is all the rage right now. A lot of people are doing it, including our very own Michael Quander. The Quanders are one of the oldest documented black families in America, and they're based right here in our area. But Michael wanted to verify his family's oral history. Tonight, he takes us through that journey one we can all learn from when trying to discover more about our roots. Yeah, I found a bombshell in my DNA, something that I wasn't expecting. But hold on, before we get there, I want to take you all back for a second so you can understand why I did this in the first place. You see, the Quander family can trace our history back more than 330 years here in America. That's stuff that's on paper, things that we can see, touch, we know it's there. But then there's this other part, oral history. You see, the Quando family has amazing stories that allow us to trace our ancestry back to Ghana, to the Amquando family. There are even stories about how slave ship masters believe the name Amquando actually sounded like I am Quando. Later in America, we began to see that O eventually fade away and replace with an ER to the name that we now know as Quander. I wanted to be able to somehow back up those stories. It's something I've never done. So I turned to DNA testing to try to verify it. The first test I tried was African ancestry. They specialize in being able to not only trace your lineage back to an African country, but to a people who live there. This test will be able to confirm what the family has already known. So I went ahead, took the test, did a couple of mouth swabs, sent it in, and then finally, the results were in. That's me right there. This is my dad, Michael Sr., my cousin and family historian, Rohila Minkwander, and that's Gina Page. She's with African ancestry. We have determined that you share paternal uh, genetic ancestry with the people in Spain today. Spain, okay. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I mean, what? Seriously? Do I look Spanish to you? I mean, eh? Seriously. What this is saying is that genetically we didn't find any matches to your Y chromosome among African lineages. The matches that we found were European, and the one, that, the one that we found the most was among people living in Spain. Bear with me, I wanna help break this down for you. You see, we get our chromosomes from our moms and our dads. Your mom has two X chromosomes, and your dad has an X and a Y. Think of them as the packaging that helps to carry your DNA. That determines everything from your skin color, your eyes, your hair, almost everything that makes you special. There are things in our DNA that don't change from generation to generation. So African ancestry only focused on the Y chromosome. We're only looking at that Michael to Michael to your father to your father to his father to his father. We're not looking at anybody else. Okay. So there, this is just one small part of your entire genetic makeup. I am shocked <laughs> right now. Um, I guess it's a part of me that wonders, I guess, what does that mean? Um, there's a part of me that asks, am I still a quander? I don't know. Well, of course. I mean, you certainly are a quander. You're, this is your father, and his That's father right. is a quander, we and have, his yeah. father is a quander. We have pictures of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, identity, that's a, great, that's a great question you're yeah. asking, because identity is a constantly evolving narrative of self. Doesn't mean you're not a quander. Right. It doesn't it, mean he's not African. It doesn't, and it doesn't mean you're not African. It just means that on that line, we just uncovered some information genetically that you didn't know existed about the Quanders. Now it's important to know that the Quander family is broken up into four main branches, and it's always been believed that we come from the same root. So my test can really only speak for my branch of the family. Now remember, my family had already done extensive research, and I had a good idea of where I came from, and that's why I did the African Ancestry test first. You see, they're the only test we could find that had a large enough database of African DNA. That means that they had the technology to not only trace ancestry back to a country in Africa, but to a specific people who live there. That left me with a lot of questions, like Spain, where did that come from? And how does Ghana fit into the picture for me? This is the part of the story where we pumped the brakes in February. We regrouped and came back with a plan. So with all of those questions swirling around my head, I went back and did some more tests, this time with Ancestry DNA and 23andMe. 
First, I'll start with the Ancestry DNA kit. These companies test in a whole different way. Instead of focusing on one single parent line, they look at your entire ethnic background and try to break that down into percentages. We got the results back, and I nervously looked at Ancestry DNA's results first. Take a look. I'm so nervous I'm messing my password up. Okay, we're in there. Oh, wow. Okay. There's some Ghana there, so that's what I was looking for yep, first. You got, got, not, yes, you got Ghana. Ivory Coast. Nigeria. Nigeria is 45%. Yeah. Now, West Europe is 3%. Now, do they, Iberian Peninsula is 1%. You see, this is what she was explaining. You can have a marker, and, you, and when we did it last time, you, it, the Spanish part came up, but now we have a breakdown. This test said that I was mostly Nigerian. I was very surprised to see that. But I was just as excited to see that Ghana and the Ivory Coast showed up too. That was 14%. And the Iberian Peninsula showed up too. And that's where Spain is. But it was only a small amount. All right, so now we're going to look at the 23 me results and see how they compare. So these are a little different. It's a little different, but guess what? You're still happy. Yeah. yeah, this is true. You know, the 23 me results were not as specific, but they did still place my primary ancestry to be from West Africa. We also saw the Iberian Peninsula on these results too, but again, it was just a small percentage. Oh, I say you're good to go. <laughs> you said I'm good to go. Yeah, bond two. So you are clearly an African. Are you happy now? Yes. <laughs> This is like the news that I really wanted to see. Um, yes. This feels so good. We did three different DNA tests. One looked at only the men on my dad's side of the family. That test said I shared a common ancestry with people from Spain. We went back, did two more tests, and those looked at my entire ethnic background. Both of them said I was primarily West African, but they did also confirm that Spanish connection. When you think about the enslaved didn't have any of this, mm -hmm. and as time passed on a couple of generations, it couldn't read, couldn't write, couldn't speak the original language uh, anymore. It, it uh, left you with a sense of loss. One thing's for sure, the science definitely confirms that my family has ancestry in Ghana. So a lot of those stories that have been passed down through the years definitely hold some weight and can certainly be true. But somewhere along the line, one test was 100% sure that a Spanish man showed up very early on in my genealogy. So that got me thinking, could slavery have played a factor here? Well, that's certainly a possibility. You see, records show that West Africans were used as slaves on the Iberian Peninsula in the 15th century. And the Spanish, they were involved in the transatlantic slave trade. If you just look at the results and I just say, oh yeah, I'm such and such, you have to understand there's a story that goes with each piece of this. All that we are is based on where we come from. Mm -hmm. And all that we're going to be is limited if you don't know where you come from. That was Michael Quanders reporting. Many people have expressed concerns over these DNA testing companies and how they store and share your data. We've posted privacy policies on WUSA9.com.